Happy Monday and welcome inside the Las Vegas Review Journal studio. I'm your host, Cassie Soto, joined by Rebels Beat reporter Mark Anderson. Mark, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, well, the first show of the new year. Right. I think we can still say Happy New Year. We're only a week in, right? No, the three or four weeks will be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 2019 has been extremely right. good to the run in Rebels. The first 2 0 conference start in 13 yeah. years for the Scarlet and Gray. They accomplished this feat after beating Colorado State on Wednesday, Wyoming on Saturday. And while 2 0 is a nice start. Yeah. They weren't really significant wins, I, I think you can say, because they beat two pretty average teams. Would you? Can you agree? Yeah, I mean, Marvin Wednesday said it after the game. It wasn't like they beat Reno and San Diego State, right. which is, he's right. But at the same time, you had this kind of schedule, you better win those games, right? So they did what they had to do. And of course, now you, we'll see what, how they do in conference play at, at New Mexico, which is a very difficult trip. But yeah, they did what they had to do. If they'd lost either one of those games and they were very much in danger, especially losing the first one, then, then there'd be all sorts of questions. But it's not that there aren't any anyway, but they would be taken up to another level. And they got both of those wins without senior Shakur Justin, uh, who recently underwent season-ending knee surgery. Who have you seen really step up to the plate and fill that void for the Rebels? Well, it's not really the same position Justin plays, but Joel Tomboy has been unbelievable. Had 31 points in his last game, seven straight games, double figures. He's become their best player, and they've moved him. He has filled Justin's position, and he's played a little old spot, but he was playing the three spot before, so they moved him into the four spot, which is Justin's spot. So, but he was playing well at the three spot, and that's where his scoring began. So he shows his versatility. Six nine guy who can shoot threes, really tough to fit, and he's only a freshman, so. Yeah. He's going to be really fun to watch. You know, they put uh, went to the three guard offense with Justin out, and that's kind of the big adjustment they made more than Tomway moving to the four was going to the three guard sp uh, lineup. And I think you've seen a difference in the way they run their offense because of that. Yeah. Um, well, the Rebels will head on the road now after having two at home. The first one against New Mexico on Tuesday. And if you know anything about Mountain West arenas, you know the pit is right. one of the hardest places to play in the conference, maybe uh, in, in all of college right. basketball. And uh, players and coaches are fully aware of how hard that place can be to play. I mean, if not the toughest place to play on the road, it's, it's, it's definitely in the top two. I mean, it's you can't even hear, like the players can't even hear my calls. Uh, and on, on, when they're on the same side, you know, it's, it's really, really loud. Well, Mark, if a packed arena wasn't enough concern, the Rebels will now face right. a Lobos team that is going to be adrenaline-filled after beating then number six UNR by 27 points on Saturday. Do you think the Rebels get a win in New Mexico? I always thought that was going to be a tough game for them. And, you know, but I, you know, the thing is, New Mexico wasn't playing well. <laughs> so you thought, okay, well, at least they should go in there and compete, right? Now you're like, oh, what, what, but which New Mexico team are they going to get? Are they going to be, get the New Mexico team that just beat the Wolfpack? Or are they going to beat the one that struggled in, in non-conference play? I think it kind of helps you be in a way in that this could be a lit-down game for the Lobos. You know, you know, it's only, what, two games or three games at, three days after the big win over the Wolfpack. Right. So maybe they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Maybe UNLV can sneak in there like they did a couple years ago. They went in there a couple years ago. No one expected them to win, and they won. Yeah. And they didn't have the talent, as near the talent they have now. So I think UNLV should at least be competitive with them. I still think New Mexico wins the game, though. You think uh, Joel puts up 31 points against the Lobos again? If he does, then he, uh, they, they got a shot. But they need help. You know, the problem with this last game was he was the only one who really stepped up. Yeah, without him, they're you know, not winning that game. They probably aren't. I mean, it, they probably lose to Wyoming if, no, if, if he doesn't have the kind of game he was. So they need other guys to step up. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of January's schedule. They'll be on the road for these next two games at New Mexico and then at Air Force, home against San Jose State, and then seeing the Lobos one more time. Quick road trip to San Diego State and then back at home to face in-state rival UNR. Uh, Mark, just kind of give me some of your predictions uh, on the schedule. Well, it, the first six games were thought to be easy, right? But that's what that's for New Mexico boy UNR. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now it's now the six games aren't looking as easy as they were. I mean, those two New Mexico games look a little bit more daunting now. Air Force, you never want to assume anything at Air Force. That's a really tough place to play. It's just a strange atmosphere. Hardly anyone shows up. You're playing at high altitude. Mm -hmm. San Jose State here is the game that if, if all of those games in this first six. They should win. Uh, the first they trip, should. They, they should. should <laughs> and then you get, you know, at the, the end of the month, you get at San Diego State UNR. Really tough way to close out January. Uh, but San Diego State looks it looks vulnerable now, but I would never count on a win at San Diego State. Never. No. Never. So, and, but UNR, you, you know, you got to figure 
It was probably one bad night, but, you know, maybe they have some bigger issues than people realize. Uh, well, we'll see how they do on Tuesday at the pit against New Mexico. You can catch that game on ESPN2. For Mark Anderson, I'm Cassie Soto. Thank you so much for watching Rebel Nation.